Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Liberty United Methodist Church here in beautiful White Plains, Georgia. We've got an incredible, awesome service planned for you today. I'm excited about today's message and today's scripture. I have, uh, to give a little prelude to that, I have been going by the lectionary that tells pastors this time of year, this is what you ought to be preaching on. Here are some suggested Bible verses. I am stepping out of that. I know the Lord has told me I believe in my heart that what I am going to preach to you about today is something that the Lord wants us to hear. Um, and, and so I'm going with it. I'm going with it this morning. Uh, but before we do anything else, let's open today's service with prayer. If you'll bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, we lift ourselves up to you this morning. We ask for your forgiveness for our sins. We ask that you lead this worship service today. We ask that the words that come from my mouth be what you want them to be and that they lay on the hearts of those that are listening and watching this morning exactly what they need to hear because only you can do that, Lord. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And at this time, we want to pray together that prayer that your son taught us to pray. So join me. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We've got uh, some announcements this morning that I, I need to make. Uh, first, let me uh, give you an opportunity to grab a pen and your prayer list. If these aren't included, I'm asking you to keep these in your prayer list to pray throughout the week. We, of course, want to pray for an end to this uh, COVID-19 pandemic and for the safety of our families and for the first responders and the healthcare workers uh, who are battling every day on this. Uh, pray for Roberta Smith. Uh, Alex and Charlotte Neal, Camilla Wilkes, Chuck Adair, Don Ellis, who's battling heart disease, Don Skinner, Chris West, and Ann and Richard Smith. A couple of celebrations from my hometown that I want to share with you. Um, I want to announce the engagement of two very dear friends of mine, Jennifer Rainey and Mark Lassen. Uh, we went to school together, we graduated together, and now they have reunited some 30 years later and are going to be getting married, and they've asked me uh, to handle that service. So I am just totally stoked and excited about that. Uh, it's a real special time. I want to congratulate all of the high school seniors, college seniors too, but uh, it's a little more, I believe it's a little more special in high school. Uh, more high schoolers will traditionally walk, accept their diplomas. It's a big event uh, in the lives of, of all of our young adults. Sometimes in colleges they don't do it, and, and I know with the, uh, the state of affairs as they are now, they're not. But two in particular I want to congratulate are Jenna Mullis and Kate Embry. Those two fine young ladies have been interning at my law office in Eatonton for some time now. They are two totally different personalities but two totally perfect young ladies. Jenna is the valedictorian of the Putnam County High School class. Kate is the salutatorian of the Gatewood High School class. So we had two of the smartest young adults in this lake area working up there with us and two just beautiful inside and out wonderful young ladies. I wanna congratulate them because they're special uh, really to mine and my wife Brandy's heart. Um, but I want to extend that to all of you high school seniors and graduating. I'm sorry you didn't get to graduate the particular way you did, but the way things are kind of shaping and working out, I think in some ways it's getting to be a little more meaningful. So um, I hope that is the case for you. We've got a special children's message uh, this morning. We're going to have prayer, uh, special music. We're going to set a tie, uh, aside time for our tithes and offerings. Uh, the scripture this morning is from the book of Matthew. Chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. Matthew 6, chap chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. The other announcements I need to uh, 
relay to you, the May 23rd tractor pull is canceled. We do not anticipate resuming in-person services until after June the 22nd. This is to be in compliance with the governor's shelter-in-place order uh, that's through June the 12th uh, for the medically fragile and for the bishops, our bishops' recommendation not to resume services until after June the 22nd. Uh, Melvin has appointed a health and welfare committee uh, here at Liberty uh, to make plans for keeping us safe when services do resume. Uh, so be on the lookout for cleaning and sanit uh, sanitizing supplies, uh, which we will be needing when that time does come. The good news that I was uh, mentioning and alluding to last week, I'm going to unveil just a little bit today. We are working on developing a website for liberty. Next week, a proposal will be sent to you church members of liberty via email. Now, if you do not receive an email from Larry by, I guess, by the end of Wednesday, that's the deadline that Larry gave me. He's going to have everybody emailed by that time. Then email Larry so he has your email address. We don't want anyone to slip through the cracks on this. This is a, a big, big deal for liberty. And you can email Larry at kandlarry at gmail.com. Let me spell that out for you. That's K-A-Y-E-A-N-D-L-A-R-R-Y -A -R -R at gmail.com. Um, a called church council meeting will be held in this sanctuary at 5.30 p.m. on Tuesday, June the 23rd to discuss and vote on this proposal. Be sure to put that on your calendar. Uh, we want to hear from everyone. Um, uh, Tom McKinley is also going to have hard copies of this proposal in the fellowship hall. They should be there before the Wednesday email deadline. We're trying to be sure that what the proposal is in front of everybody. We want you to be able to respond whether if, if we're not able to meet in person, hopefully we might can do something uh, virtually, but we're planning on meeting in person on the first day that the bishop and the governor are going to let us to, which is June the 23rd, so that everybody can have input and buy-in on this decision. Um, now is time for my little guys, uh, my girls and boys. I got a special message that's just for you. I want to share it with you. Uh, and as you know, this is the time where I take a break from the church and I'm going to need you probably to wake me up again. So count with me to wake me up. One, two, three. Wake up, Pastor oh, Chris. Oh, 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 hey guys. Hey, shh, do you hear that? I'm in my cave. Yet it sounds like it's raining. How can that be? It's really not. I just put the sound on to make my plants think that it's raining. Hey, I want to show you something. Come with me. Hey guys, I want to show you something about these plants, okay? Remember we planted some plants the other day? I want to show you something. All right guys, you might be asking, why is he growing plants? under his house in his cave. Well, this is what I do in the winter and the springtime when it's too cold. Being underground like this keeps them warm, but I don't have any sunlight. So I have to use the lights. Might be a little bright, but the baby plants think that it's sunlight. I want to show you something. Look at this guy here. You see how he's reaching up, reaching up, reaching up. They want to grow towards the light. Even these little guys down here, they'll start doing that too when they get big enough. And these are some of the same plants that you guys got and they're just now starting to grow. So all little things want to grow towards the light. Here you can see some of the other ones stretching their arms out. Here's this guy. 
he's reaching up pretty high. The reason I wanted to show you that was because you guys are kind of like plants. You grow, you used to be smaller than you were now, and you're going to be bigger, kind of like us grown-ups. And you also, Jesus wants you to know, need to grow up towards the light. Now, the Bible tells us that Jesus is the light. It's a little bit different than this kind of light, but that's what He wants you to do. He wants you to grow up strong, reaching up towards Him, to grow big and strong towards Jesus and His light. Okay? All right. I want you guys to come pray with me. All right, guys. I hope you understood what today's lesson was about. Jesus wants you to grow towards Him. He wants you uh, to bring Him into your heart, okay? So think of Jesus as the light, and as you're growing, you're growing up to Him, okay? That's one of the reasons I like gardening and planting new plants in the garden. And today was the last day I was able to show you all my plants together like this because after church today, I'm going to go plant them in my garden, finally. Uh, I've had to wait a long time because I had to make sure that my dog couldn't get into my garden. And I think I finally gotten that figured out. So let's pray together and then we'll get back to the rest of the service. And you can go on about having a wonderful Sunday. Bow your heads with me, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for things that grow. I thank you so much today for our little guys and our little girls who are growing I ask you to be with them. They haven't been able to be with their friends and their teachers at school, but they have been able to spend a lot of time, more time with their family than they usually have. So let us remember to count those blessings. I ask you to be with these little guys, put a hedge of protection around them, help them grow up and grow towards you, towards the light. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen. See you next Sunday, guys. I love you.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, little guys, for joining me for that. It's the, the most special part of the service for me, being able to prepare and plan and talk to you guys about what I know God wants you to hear to get closer to Him. And thank you uh, to Horace for that beautiful music, for sharing that with us, especially in this time where we're not able uh, to come congregate uh, and do that together. Now, folks, it's time in our service for us to give back to God our gifts and his tithes. So make your checks payable to Liberty United Methodist Church. That's at 3091 Liberty Church Road, White Plains, Georgia, 30678. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless all those at this time who are writing checks back to you, back to this church and to your kingdom to be used for your kingdom. We ask that you take these and bless them and use them in this community, in this state, and in this world to further your word and to your purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. time I want you to stand up. I want you to stretch your legs. I want you to get ready to recite the most important statement you will make in your life, which is our Apostles' Creed. Christians, I ask you now, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And you may be seated. So I want you to grab your Bibles, and I want you to read with me. Now, first I'll tell you, and you can see where we're beginning in my Bible, that the ink in this Bible is red. And do you know why it is red? Yes, it is, means it is Jesus talking, but it is red because it needs to be read. So join me. Jesus is talking. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, or what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is God's word for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So, I am titling 
today's message. I'm worried about being scared and I'm afraid I'm about to worry about something. There is so much fear and worry, even more so than normal, that we are allowing to creep into our minds. And that's exactly what it does. Worry creeps into our minds. And then it starts digging. And then it starts spreading into other things. Then we become fearful of things that we have no control over. Sometimes we worry about the past, things that we've done in the past. And what good is that? We can't change the past. You can't roll it back. We worry about things that are going on now that we have no control over. The problem with worrying, aside from the fact that it's not productive, is that it's not even religious. I'm going to share with you a statement I heard by one of the best pastors who has ever lived. And his name is, many of you know him, John Hagee. I was listening to one of his sermons one time, and he made this statement. And I believe it to be true. Pastor Hagee stated, worry is interest paid on trouble that never happens. Let me say that again. Worry is interest paid on trouble that never happens. Now, I'm not going to stand here before you today and tell you that I've never worried about something. But what Jesus is telling us, when we worry, we just expressed the lack of faith in God. God is going to take care of us. And if we worry otherwise, we're telling God, we don't need you. When you worry, you are making a statement to God. I don't trust you with this, God. When you begin to fear that there's going to be a negative reaction, to a decision that you're going to make to do the right thing. You just told God, nah, I'm not letting you handle this one, God. I'm trusting the devil on this one. When you're worried or fear that leaving your comfort zone, whatever that may be, in order to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, whether it's in your family, your workplace, or outside in the world, when you fear leaving a comfort zone, you just told God, I can handle this better than you, God. I'm going to stay in my comfort zone. Since we began here this morning, you're already approximately one half hour closer to your grave. We only have a finite amount of time on this earth. Worry eats and consumes life time. Let me say that again because I'm not talking about a lifetime. I mean the time of your life. You have a certain amount of it. How much are you going to give it to the devil and to worry? Because that's what it does. It chews it up so that you can't use the power through God to do the things to make your life joyful, peaceful, and fulfilling. It eats it up. It clouds your thoughts. It's like a, a mental and spiritual cancer that takes, it puts you to convincing yourself that you can't do it. And you don't have any control over these things. But I do. I call it my mind going down an Alice in Wonderland rabbit hole. Once that one worry ekes in to my thoughts, well, it'll spread. 
And I'm like, well, and if that bad event happens, then, then this is going to happen, and then this is going to happen. And, and all of a sudden, I'm worrying about so many things going wrong and negative in the future. Not only have I hurt my own health, you know, worrying is the biggest cause of stomach ulcers and a lot of the coronary problems that we have. Health. It's a medical fact. Just worry. Aside from that is the time we spend worrying. Two things are happening when we worry with time. Simultaneously, while we're worrying, we are being unproductive. But also while we're worrying, we're taking up time in our life where we could have accomplished something more powerful, where we could have accomplished something that is more peaceful, where we could have accomplished something that's more joyful. It eats away and erodes from the time, the time in our life that we have here. And I wanted to talk about this today because with this COVID-19 pandemic, we are inundated, not just on a daily basis, but throughout the day for those that tune in to the news with bad news after bad news after bad news. I, I don't usually watch the news. And when I say the news, I'm not picking a side. I, I'm including ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, Fox News, whatever it may be. Remember something. Whichever news channel it is, you need to know this before you go in it. And you probably need to grab your Bible because Jesus is telling us here that when worry comes in, the way you defeat worry is by seeking God. You can tattletale to God on the worry. God, this is creeping into my life. Give me the power to get over it. I want to experience your power. I don't want to be debilitated by the worries of this world. By devil, the devil injecting these worries and thought into my life to, takes me away from doing what you want me to do. So sit down. When you sit down in front of the news, I want you to know this. Now, they're not, I'm not trying to make out that they're setting out to lie to you. But the fact of the matter is, is these news companies and the, the anchor men and women who were there. Their number one job is not to convey you the truth. Now, a lot of the facts and data they're sharing are, are truthful. At least they understand them to be. But it's not their job to convey to you the whole story. Their job is to make you want to come back and tune in again. And the TV channels aren't the only ones. Before TV, there was the newspapers. There's other forms of media, and it's even you know, done on the internet some. The number one job is to capture you, capture your attention, and to make you tune in so that their ratings go up, so that they can charge their advertisers more, and so that they can make money. It's a show. Now, a lot of the information they're using is true, but oftentimes, here's what I wonder. I don't watch the news every day, but I go tune in to some of it to see what's going on. And that's part of the reason I picked this to, to talk to you about today. I see the numbers of confirmed cases of COVID-19. And I also see the, how many of those are hospitalized. I see how many of those are deaths broken down per state. And I can even go to our state's uh, health website and see where it's broken down per county. And I check on my own county and I check on Green County. You know what I don't see? How many of the confirmed cases are currently active cases? Because at some point, the first cases of COVID-19, that is the people who contracted it, who tested positive, 
whether they were hospitalized or not, at some time, they overcame it. The virus had run its life, and they're now healthy. What we see in the numbers, they're still included in the confirmed case. But we don't know how many people have gotten better. Don't take that as me sliding those who are at risk, because one thing I do believe and know from what I have seen and read, some of us are more susceptible to a serious, if not lethal attack from this disease than others are. And I noticed that in the past couple of weeks, there's been a lot of uh, talk in the news about whether or not teams are going to be able to practice football this summer, whether schools are going to open up, whether colleges are going to open up, or whether they're going to stay online. But it seems like now that we're at the end of this school year, uh, a lot of the focus now is what's going to happen with our next school year. And I, I don't know um, what the intention of it is, but I noticed the other night, now they're uh, showing, and I believe that these cases are happening, uh, some of our children are contracting uh, a particular ailment and disease, and they're flashing these pictures of, of babies and children with rashes, and the headlines say that it's, it's tied to COVID-19. And when I watched the little article uh, on YouTube or whatever it was I was watching from one of the news stations, the person in there even said, look, yeah, they've got the antibodies of the COVID just like the parents do, but they, they never tested positive for it. 135 cases is what the news was, was showing with these children. And was that 135 cases in my county? No. In the state of Georgia? No. 135 cases in this country. 135. And I hate that these 135 children are having to battle with this. But the ones that I saw that they were doing their story about were walking out of the hospital. And the doctor said, it's not like COVID. We can treat this. We can handle this as long as you get them to the medical care. But they're flashing up these numbers. It's almost as if we're supposed to start fearing for our children now. Jesus wants you to know you don't throw caution into the wind. You don't run across a street without looking both ways. You don't enter into the public without keeping your social distancing and your mask. But if all you're pumping into your brain and into your heart are things of this world and you're not filtering it through what Jesus taught us about God, the devil's going to win. He's going to win with worry. He's going to win with fear. And when he does that, he has debilitated you from the power that God has for you while you're on this earth. You know, the Bible says the devil came to seek, steal, and destroy. The biggest thing he can destroy is time. If he can take up your time worrying about things that you don't have control over. If he can take up your time diverting you from God. And, and he'll trick you. He'll trick me. He'll trick the rest of you if you don't have the power of God with you. If you don't give your life to God. And you expect to take the devil on and the evil of this world one on one. You're going to lose. The devil will make you think you're going to win. Your little successes, whether financial, in your workplace, things like that. If he can get you focused on the things of this world, on succeeding through the things of this world, without having God in the picture, he wins. He turns you away from God. Don't let worry infect your 
ability to consume God's power he's got for you. God is going to take care of you. That's what Jesus just told us in the Bible. And he went a little further. He said, all right, you don't believe me? Let me give you some proof. Look at the birds. Birds don't worry. God takes care of them. Birds have enough to eat. They have the materials to make their nests. One of my favorite animals, probably my favorite, probably because of my physical resemblance to the same, is the polar bear. Now they're up in the Arctic. It's just barren ice everywhere. But God gave the polar bear the ability to stay warm. To be strong enough to bust through the ice to eat and to drink. He's taking care of all of these things that are beneath us. And the Bible tells us that the plants and the, the animals of this earth are for us. He gave us the ability to have a free will and to make decisions. The backside of that is it gives a back door for Satan to get you to start worrying about things that you don't have control over. Put the control of your life into God. Worries will begin to evaporate. Fears will begin to subside. Does it mean being a Christian means you're going to build some insulating invisible wall or force field around you that prevents bad things from happening to you? No, it doesn't. Jesus said, trouble's coming. Let the trouble be the trouble. Deal with the trouble when you need to deal with the trouble. Don't deal with the shadow of the trouble. The shadow of a sword never cut anybody. Deal with the sword when you deal with the sword. Whatever pain comes with it, confine it to whatever event that is. Don't draw it out in time and live the suffering of that pain before it ever even happens. You just wasted that much of your life. God will provide you with what you need for your troubles. He will show you a way. Jesus is telling us that. He's going to provide you with what you need. But you've got to believe in it. You've got to accept it. You've got to ask God to be in your heart. You've got to say, God, I know I'm not in control anymore. I want to put my life in your hands. Do with it what you will. Now, I know some of you are thinking, because I thought this too. I've experienced something bad in the past that was painful. Doesn't it make sense that I should worry about that happening again so that I avoid it? Hmm? You know what you just did? You did what I did, which was tell God, I'm in control of this. You're not. You're not using the power of God where he needs you to work when you're allowing your thoughts and your feelings to be occupied by this worry and fear. And that worry and fear in some ways does exactly what this virus we're combating does. I saw where uh, some Japanese, I don't know if they were Japanese scientists, doctors, uh, what have you, but they did this experiment uh, to try to show how a virus spreads. And they did it by using the black lights. They had one person in a setting of uh, maybe 20 people and they were trying to duplicate the scene of a, of a buffet on a cru cruise ship. And, and the eating area of the buffet. And so for this one person, they put this particular cream on his hands. Now they loaded him up pretty doggone good, okay? Uh, which first thing it tells you is, if you wash your hands, you're not gonna have this problem. But anyway, they put this particular cream on his hands. They cut, they allowed him to work in the light. Everybody went and fixed their meal, poured their water, did what they did. 
And then they went back and showed the video with the lights off and the black lights on. And it was scary. Everybody had this translucent cream on them somewhere. It was on every glass. It was on every picture. Once somebody touched something, it went to the other one and it spread. Worry does the same thing. It's why I, I refer to it and I think of it as a, a spiritual cancer because it spreads. It's not just one worry and it puts bookends on itself and stops. It spreads. And then we convey worry to others, to our children. And then they may become fearful. But it, it spreads through our mind and through our heart like a virus, infecting more areas of our decision making. It's robbing us of the joy and peace that God has for us. It's preventing us from doing the things that God would have us do. And it's destroying our life because it is stealing our life time. Amen. And I want you to receive this benediction. The benediction I have for you is not from me. It is from King David. And it is our 23rd Psalm. King David in this hymn of praise said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear evil, for thou, God, art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou, God, preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy that follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Go in peace.